how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live, where with our very special guest, many time guest, the CEO of Copper Bank, Gianni Kovacevic. How are you doing today, Gianni? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be heading back to Europe today, and I'll be spending the next uh, couple months there. But my team is uh, hard at work in Arizona and soon to be Nevada. And this is a really interesting copper market. And anyone that's been um, looking at my work and maybe caught up the first couple interviews, hopefully people will look at the long, not the longer term, but the more the punchline of how this all ends and copper wins, it, it wins the prize. It's gonna win the Oscar in the movie here. And it's looking real interesting. So let's talk about some uh, topical things. I agree with you actually on Bloomberg, they're talking about copper a lot because copper, like you've mentioned, is being utilized everywhere. So it is a very, very serious opportunity right now for investors. And it's been a wild couple of weeks as copper prices were at all time highs and Copper Bank has had a fairly good run in the market with its share price. What are your thoughts on copper prices as the market has been taking a little bit of a downturn? And how do you think that will affect Copper Bank? On Twitter, just now, I put up a fantastic 120 year chart for copper demand, including some of the technological innovation that created this what's actually 3% very reliable kegger growth rate in the demand of copper for 120 years. But now we go into hyperdrive because this Green New Deal, electric vehicles, and the electrification of everything, in fact, the kegger growth rate, according to many estimations, not a wild one, but, in not a low, but the middle of the road scenario, 6% kegger growth rate for copper. There's panic in the market because business is really good for people that make things. Employment rates just skyrocketed yet again in the United States. The report just came out about, a, about an hour ago. Business is good and it's gonna get better if you're in the business of generating, transferring, or making things that utilize electrical energy. We are just beginning. And so copper had this big run up. For people that have been following during the COVID low, it was two and a half dollars a pound and now it went to $4.35. That is a big number because guess what? That, that is near the all-time high for copper. We don't have euphoria yet. When you look at the valuations of copper stocks, even though they went up a little bit, I mean, Copper Bank went up to 70, 80 cents. But as I said before, the previous market cap high of everything we own would be in excess of $3 a share. The last time copper was $4 a pound. Just imagine. There's a disconnect there. Absolutely. There is a fantastic trading opportunity and there's a, there, there's a, there's a great long-term value investors opportunity. So depending on what hat you're wearing, I think people have to look at this consolidation because the underlying fundamentals have only gotten stronger. So there's this opportunity, this disconnect in the market. And as Ben Graham, I'll use another Ben, ben Graham quote, a, a different one than, than last time. In the, in the short term, markets are voting machines. They're erratic. There's all sorts of psychology that happens in the market. But guess what? In the longer term, they are always a weighing machine. The true value of something will come out. And so we're going to continue to talk about this. You know, I say what I do. I do what I say. Uh, I've been buying more stock. I do file this as an insider. And I think people can look at that. Your, your, your readers are smart, whether they're traders or long-term players. They can look at a chart. I'm right. Um, they're smart and you can just see this. This is a consolidation phase. And, and in my view, I cannot suggest this strong enough. People need to monitor this basically day by day because one, one thing's going to either break out again and the margin of safety because copper would have to break down to like $3.50 a pound to really change the narrative. We don't have that. When that happens, I'll come on the show and I'll say, okay, it's a reset. Let's see what, where, where we're going now. But the underlying commodity is telling us um, the trade is on. Great. I've been hearing from a lot of different sources that later this year, as tech stocks could take a downturn, people will start to move more money into the commodity sector. Being a seasoned copper guy, what do you think it means for copper prices, in your opinion? Well, that's an interesting observation. Many people have probably seen this. When you compare the, the stock market to the basket of commodities, and they've never been cheaper still, even though they've come up a little bit. But you still look, look, if you look at a contemporary graph, uh, to be clear, that basket, commodities compared to the stock market have never been cheaper. So yes, we already have seen some rotation. 
you will continue to see rotation. Why? Because they're cheap. You know, I just talked about the disconnect, even though the commodities have come up, but the, but the equities, these mid-tier junior equities are still trading near historical lows. Something has to break there. Either these commodity prices are going to completely collapse and then the stocks are still valued like that, or you're going to see this, this massive wave of rotation into away from other things, but into commodities. And then you got to look at the future of commodity demand. Which commodities have the best kegger growth rate? It's the electric metals. And who leads the electric metals? It's copper. You're going to see a lot of people rotate into copper, and there are very few names, be it from the big companies like Glencore, Rio Tinto, BHP, to the little guys. How many juniors listed on any global stock exchange have two development copper projects that they own 100%? You can count them on one hand. We're one of them, right? So that's what, that's what makes Copper Bank special. And then you look at us on whatever metric you want, on a per share basis, Copper Bank is undervalued to the peer group and the entire peer group is undervalued compared to where we should be. So you, it's, a, it's a pretty compelling um, uh, narrative, I would think. What are the main things Copper Bank is doing to make itself stand out in a marketplace to help build investor confidence? Well, we just talked about what we own. We own two development projects. It would take an excess of $120 million to duplicate what's already occurred. As we always say, mining is a ruinously expensive endeavor. Yes. So we bought property that other people spent this 120 some odd million dollars. They collapsed in value. And now we're moving that portfolio forward. To augment those development projects, we have three very exciting blue sky exploration projects. And when you're talking commodities, it's nice to have those um, areas where you can poke a drill hole. And if you find more resource, just like if, if, an analogy, if you find another oil well and it's a gusher, that's a good thing. Yeah. We have three such properties. Wow. And then within that, we got an additional business, which is our royalty business. When we are successful moving these things forward with all the property we own, um, there's no royalty there or, or predominantly no royalty. We can create an organic for very low cost, uh, a royalty company. So you got all the different disciplines of what you're going to want to invest in, uh, market cap that still reflects to make it clear again, uh, based on our share count, and we don't need to raise capital, we have all the capital we need to answer unanswered questions until we drill. It would be from this share count trading at 50 cents. We have a dollar and 50 a share in paid drilling, and the previous market cap high would be over three dollars a share. So there's your there's your delta. Can you go through the property and how many pounds of copper is potentially in the ground so that we can do some simple math for investors so everyone understands the potential value you guys are sitting on? Yeah, so the, the previous operator spent this $120 million. We have historical economic studies and historical resource estimates. We don't consider them to be contem contemporary, but they were done to, the, to the, the national instrument standards. So there's a high level of confidence in their accuracy. Uh, people can look at those, they're on our website, but at our Copper Creek project, we've got in all categories, 8 billion pounds of copper in that resource. We measured indicated, uh, 500 million tons at 0.44% copper. And then we got another 400 some odd million tons of inferred at 0.34% copper, 8 billion pounds. Wow. How, how much is a pound of copper? You do the math. In our Nevada project, in all categories, we've got 830 million pounds of copper based on those historical studies. And, and in, we actually have 600 million pounds as a reserve. So it costs, let me do the math here for people. This is very important. For the big companies, business is gonna be good. They're gonna wanna replace their resources and reserves. It's hard to find uh, a copper deposit. They, we spent $100 billion as an industry in the last 20 years looking for more copper. A lot of misses, a lot of low-grade stuff. We now know that it costs, on average, four cents a pound to delineate a measured and indicated pound of copper. Does that make sense? So if you want to find a deposit that's got 10 billion pounds, it's going to cost about $400 million in drilling and missing and, and delineating an expiration to find that 10 billion pound deposit. There's a reason why the transactions in the past cycle went for between three and 10 cents per established pound in the ground when, when companies were being taken over. So to reiterate, we got 8 billion pounds at Copper Creek and we got just under 1 billion pounds in Nevada at contact based on historical resource estimates and people have to use that caveat. This, this work was done and published in the year 2013. That's very impressive. Is Copper Bank looking to acquire any more properties or are you just mainly focused on the properties that you currently have? 
We're transactional. We're always open to look at something. But frankly, Rich, we looked at over 200 projects the past six years. Wow. They're in bad locations. They got too many warts on them. We don't feel that a major company is going to want to buy them. So we had three criteria when we acquired our portfolio. Our children have to be able to work on the projects. We're not going to crazy places. There had to have been a meaningful amount of capital spent on them to de-risk them. There's enough risk in this business. We don't want to have that. Absolutely. And the most important one, will a larger company than Copper Bank actually want to move a project like that forward? We take all three boxes. We've got our hands full with what we own. And now that the market is normalized, we're looking to move these projects forward. And the net present value based on those historical economic studies, this is very important for people. Where are we? The scale, the sensitivity scale on what the project is worth depending on the commodity price. This is important. It stops at $4 a pound. We're at 410, 420 a pound. It, they're, they're, it's off the scale. So when we eventually look at updating these economic studies, what does the net present value look like when you enhance the project, but then start adding you know, a power of magnitude? And based on those historical economic studies, I've said this before, the net present value for every 25 cents a pound that copper goes higher, we uh, there's a lift of 300 million US dollars of net present value for our portfolio. That is why these stories are so interesting at these copper prices and people, they're taking notice. I can assure you the larger companies are knocking on doors, they're kicking rocks. They themselves wanna replace reserves because they're anticipating for a very boom, uh, boom decade in copper demand. Well, no, I know you're right. Cause when I listen to Bloomberg, I have never heard them talk about copper until just recently. And now they're talking about it daily. So when it starts becoming mainstream, that's when you know that people are watching. So oh, yeah. very, very strong sign that there's more big things coming for copper and for copper bank. Can you give us a breakdown on how much copper bank has in the bank and what some of your capital raising goals are for the remainder of 2021? I know you said you don't need to raise any capital. Will you look to raise capital if it's under the right circumstances? This is a great question for greedy retail investors. They, would, they should be asking, is there another financing coming? Are they going to get diluted out? Is there going to be some cheap warrant? We don't do that, Rich. Look at our trajectory. Look at our history. We've always raised capital at a premium to the market, and we did it without warrants. We just closed the financing. I've got enough capital to get me to the end of 2023. Sorry, to the end of, until the middle of 2023. And when we allocate these funds, our holding costs are very low. I'll put it very clear to hold our project in Nevada, $40,000 a year to hold our project in Arizona, $125,000 a year. Our g is low. We don't even have an office. Um, our salaries are extremely low. We have enough capital to last until we want to drill. But first I want to present a whole litany of positive news based on this, the work that we're doing on showing where we would like to drill. And I can say positive because we're just simply going to reinterpretate historical data. People can look at this. This has all been released in, uh, previously. We, we know what's been drilled. And now how do we augment that? And so, um, no, unless we see some serious share price appreciation, I don't see anything happening. If our share price goes a bit lower, we would be happy buyers of our own stock. We've done this since five, or, since five years. I will say one more thing about the copper price. The copper price has rolled over here a little bit from 435 down to 410. And it, could it go to a little bit lower perhaps? Nobody wants to pay high copper prices, all the fabricators around the world. And when the copper price went up so high so fast, this became the easiest short-term short trade for, for, for these type of traders. And that, of course, fabricators are very happy to pay a little bit less for their copper. That's only going to last until it lasts because business is good. They all need to procure for the next decade, 6% CAGR growth rate, at least, you know, this only works. I would suggest to people days and weeks, but not months and quarters. So it'll consolidate, but we will eventually, in my opinion, have another up leg because the, we're not going to be able to make future projects economic unless the copper price does go higher. What's the main goal for Copper Bank in 2021 that you want shareholders to know about today before we say goodbye? Well, it's news. We're going to drive a lot of news. So depending on, you've got two types of investors in your audience. You've got the traders. Hopefully I've captured their imagination to look at this consolidation because when it goes, it's going to go. And then you've got your longer term players. And, and we want to augment 
our historical uh, studies. We're going to be delivering all this, all these results to the market. And then we're going to present what I believe are going to be very exciting, very sexy, I should say, drilling programs to augment and increase the confidence and size of our historical resources. So that's our focus. Our focus is to, is to accomplish this. And then we will address those people that are interested because what we own is very rare. When you're talking about the future of copper mining, and I can tell you, I know where all the copper projects, there's only about 20 of them that are being built right now around the world. They're in the Philippines, uh, sorry, they're in Russia, Kazakhstan, uh, Mongolia, Chile, Peru, and Congo, and one in Serbia. Miners want to be in Arizona. That's where they want to be. And so who's got a large project that's elephant country in a good location with a big private property component that's in the famed copper corridor? Not many. Stay tuned, everyone. This is going to be a very exciting 2021 for Copper Bank and, and for copper. What is the best way for shareholders to get in contact with the company? People should be following me on Twitter. I, I post a lot of very actionable, very, um, uh, very important information on copper. My, my uh, Twitter handle, just plug in my name and you'll see me there. And of, of course, they should look at that chart I put up today, but they'll continue to see me put in these hard to find, but very important data figures that relate to energy and copper. So that's, that's the best place to find me. But of course, people can go to our website. They can register there and, and get on our information list. And that'll, they'll be updated on all the news that we deliver to the market. And I also encourage people, please watch our insider buying. Watch at these prices. Uh, we will be one of the most active, I think, uh, uh, smaller market cap companies with insider activity. Gianni, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Guys, remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. Consult with a financial advisor. I believe once you consult with a financial advisor, you will find that the projects that we're talking about are very high in quality. This is a very high quality project. Really excited to see how it goes. If you guys like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we're bringing the winners and we bring them to you first. Copper Bank's already been a winner for our community. Congratulations to members all over the world. And in my opinion, it's just getting started. Gianni, have a great day. Thank you for joining us today Yes, once again. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, everybody.